Sometimes men unknowingly play tricks on you. And if you're not aware of the confusing mixed signals men send to women, you may end up falling hard for a guy who will end up wasting months or years of your life unnecessarily. So today I'm going to be sharing five confusing signs that get women in trouble regardless of how successful or smart they are so you can spot them and better yet, avoid them. I'm convinced that many of the guys who've broken your heart are good guys at heart who don't know what they want or want something different and don't have the courage to state it or are confused in some way. So a good way to think about it is this. If your worst enemy hands you a sugar pill, nothing happens if you take it because it's just sugar. If your best friend with the best intentions inadvertently hands you a cyanide pill, if you take it, you'll die. So if you invest time in men and don't recognize mixed signals, even if the guys are good and have good intentions at heart, you'll end up getting heartbroken. You'll end up pushing the love life that you want years into the future. And I want to prevent you from going there. So this video is going to share with you not just what are the mixed signals lots of women fall for even when they're super smart, but also what is one specific antidote to each one of them so you can stop this from happening to you. The first mixed signal guys give is that what I call the unsustainable intense start, followed by a little bit of silence. That means that the guy connects with you. He's so into you. You're the most amazing energy he's seen. And when you connect with him, you feel, wow, he's my soulmate from three past lives. I feel like I've known this guy forever. We talk for hours. And then what happens? Week number two comes along or date number three comes along and he's spent He's putting so much effort and so much intensity that it's impossible to sustain. So he has to retreat. He feels weird. He reconsiders. He gives you the silent treatment a little bit or something similar to it. And you start freaking out because you thought you found the finally found your guy. So what's the antidote to this? Whenever a guy starts really strong, it's better for you to ask him to pace himself. It's better for you to connect with them for an hour or two max than to have a five hour first date. Again, there's exceptions to the rule. And if you happen to have one, cool, but make sure that you see him a little bit less at the beginning so that he gets a chance to miss you, understand what happened. And then if he really has it in him, if it's not just a projection, if it's not just a fantasy, he can continue showing up and build that emotional connection with time, which will mean more than all at once. Number two, second mixed signal is what I call the articulate vision followed by a lack of hunger. So here's the thing. Imagine you be connecting with guy after guy after guy on the apps, on dates, who seem to want something pretty basic, who are not intelligent enough to hold your interest, who maybe say they just want to have sex, or they're saying they want something a little bit more than sex, but not quite a relationship. And finally, you connect with a guy who tells you to your face, here's the type of connection I'm looking for. Here's the type of family I want. Here's the type of marriage that I'm looking for. And you start getting all excited because you say, finally, I found a guy who really wants what I want. And then you see through a little bit of action that there's a mismatch between his high clarity of vision and his poor execution on the ground. So what happens when you connect with someone who's clear? Instead of telling yourself, I found the guy that, I, that I've been looking for, tell yourself, so far, this guy seems to want what I want. Time will tell you there's no variable that will show you more about a man that the time you invest in dating him. So it's a great start if he knows what he wants or seems to know what he wants. It's a great start if he can articulate it to you stronger and clearer than other guys. Don't assume that because he's saying that, he actually is capable of delivering it. Don't get confused with the signal that like he's the guy I've been looking for. Make sure that you take time to date him, time to witness if the consistency, if the follow through, if the communication between dates, if the pursuit, if that still exists going forward, so that it's not just a high level projection on either one of your parts. Confusing signal number three, the non-date invite. Guy connects with you. You have good time, good energy. He seems to be into you. Consistently when you connect with him, he tells you, we should see each other. I'd really like to connect with you. Let's hang out. I'd love to take you out for dinner. And then nothing happens. Crickets. He's not following through. What happens when a guy is always having the good intention of will should do something, but doesn't do it? If you believe that he's saying the truth, then you might even block some time in your calendar because he's saying to you, hey, I want to see you next Friday. 
You say, great. And now you think you have a date. A date without a time and a place is not a date. It's a fantasy. So to end this thing from happening to you, when a guy says, I'd love to see you next Friday, then say, awesome. I'd love to see you next Friday too. Would you mind doing this for me? Because I really want to make sure this happens. Would you mind telling me by Tuesday night at the latest or Wednesday morning at the latest what the time and place is so we can make it happen? I can block it out of my calendar. So you're saying two things at once. I'm not blocking it yet. And please follow through and share this with me if you really want to see me. He doesn't have to. You're not forcing him to do it. But what happens if it's Wednesday night, not just Wednesday morning? He hasn't followed through. Then assume he's not doing it and have something else to do. Don't, you don't need to re remind him. If he wants to do it, he'll do it. And if he doesn't have the intelligence, the follow through, the commitment to remember he said that, then take it as a sign that perhaps it's not the best investment of your time just yet. Now, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the root cause that's keeping you single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women find love in all walks of life, different continents, different love challenges, and put it together in a simple quiz that you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in the next six seconds or so, you'll have two things. They answer the question, why you're still single. And then a custom report is going to share with you what is the number one thing you can do based on your specific blind spot to reverse this trend and attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Confusing mixed signal number four, the early intro to friends and family. So again, if you've had the experience of a dude that keeps you as his darkest secret and you finally connect with a guy who week number one, he's taking you made as well, you might think, oh my God, Things are going great. He's progressing. He's showing me that he's really into me. Not necessarily. Although it's preferable that a guy wants to introduce you with time, not immediately to friends and then family, because those are important things to him. A guy who does it too early might just be doing this as something he does. Might be just getting unconscious excitement and intensity so you can soften up a little bit. Again, he's not Machiavelli trying to plan this, but he understands that if you feel more at ease, it's going to be more easy for you to connect with him, open physically, open sexually. So he might do the early intro and then mean really nothing. So make sure that it takes some time to introduce friends and family, or if he's doing it early, that you don't assume that it means anything other than the guy is the guy who is introducing me early to friends and family, but he may not really want long-term commitment. He may not really be able to deliver long-term commitment. He's just doing something that feels good in the moment. And the last one, deep conversations that help women feel that the guy is really into them that don't lead to dates or in-person meetings. So I've connected with so many women who share with me, I met this guy and we connected for a few weeks and the majority of the contact was on a freaking app. Not even on video calls, not even in person, much less in person, but on an app. So that is the worst way of getting to know someone because you're going to fill in the blanks and assume too many things and project more than you want to I not really get a chance to know someone. Now, there's going to be exceptions to the rule, right? Obviously, if the guy is not in your city, well, you might have to spend a little more time between dates connecting that way. But first thing I'll say is don't do long distance. If you haven't gotten what you want and your solution is the long distance, it's the wrong thing to do for most women. There's an exception to the rule, but for 99% of you, that's going to be a huge time waste. That's going to be incredibly hard to gauge if he's the real guy or not, because every time you see him, you're on your Sunday bests, metaphorically speaking, and you don't get a chance to see him day-to-day -day life. But if there's a guy that's connecting with you in your city and he's not asking you on dates, then set a boundary. Let the guy know that you enjoy connecting with him and you really are one of those people who prefer to get to know someone in person. Not that you'll never get to connect with him outside of the face-to-face -face world, but if his primary way of getting to know you is electronic in nature. It says a lot about his level of commitment, his level of availability, his level of consciousness. So make sure that you set a boundary saying, hey, I'd love to continue this conversation in person. If you want to ask me out on a date, I might say yes. So take it offline and then in person, get a chance to gauge if he is who he says he is, if he really has the time, if he has the energy, if he has the presence because otherwise you may be falling for a mirage in the desert. Hope this is helpful and useful. And if it is, it would mean the world to me.
and to my channel if you click like and subscribe. If you found this helpful, please share it with a friend who needs to hear this. And last but not least, if you'd like to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, tricks, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.